questions from the audience. Otherwise, I would um, thank um, Dr. Gephardt again, and I would switch to the next speaker, um, thank which, you. which is yeah, thank you very much. Um, who, which is Dr. Manuel Gruber. Dr. Manuel Gruber is a research associate at the Chair of Structural and Functional Ceramics at the Department of Material Science at the Montan Universität in Leoben in Austria. And he will give his talk today on the small scale mechanical characterization of lithium tantalate and lithium niobate single crystals for SAW filters. SAW filters. Um, I guess um, Dr. Gephardt still needs to stop sharing the screen and yes, perfectly. And then we can get um, Dr. Gruber's screen. Okay, um, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and we can see your screen. It's still in the, not yet in the presentation mode. Wonderful. Okay. So now, 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 we, now we see it in the presentation mode, but we also see your notes. Okay, so let me try again. Um, so maybe it works in the second screen. Okay, is it better now? And um, we still see your notes. Okay, this is weird. So, okay. Um, no, we, 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 still, we still get the notes. Um, okay, so. Better now? Yes, now it's wonderful. Perfect. Okay, so thank you so much for this nice introduction. Um, today I would like to talk about the mechanical properties of functional materials uh, of lithium tantalate and lithium niobate single crystals used for surface acoustic wave filters. Um, what these filters do is to basically filter one frequency within a certain bandwidth. And to suppress all other frequencies as good as possible. They are used in mobile devices and due to the increasing number of frequency bands used, thinking of uh, Wi Fi and 3G, LTE, 4G, and different frequency bands for different countries, up to about 100 filters will be used for the next generation of up to date smartphones, for example. Here we see a schematic representation of how such a surface acoustic wave filter can look like. So we have metal electrode fingers on top of a piezoelectric substrate. And if any kind of sinusoidal electric signal comes into these fingers, um, surface acoustic waves are emitted from each, fingers, each finger. And due to destructive interferences, most of them vanish. Only one frequency can pass the filter and can be converted back into an electric signal at the output in the digital transducer and then be further processed within a microelectronic system. Um, one important or one problem is that this center frequency can be temperature dependent. So if the temperature increases, for example, on a warm summer day, um, the substrate um, the dimensions between the fingers will increase. The Young's modulus of the substrate is also temperature, temperature dependent. And so the filtered frequency can change. And um, to handle this, there are certain single crystalline piezoelectric substrates with good properties and certain cuts can overcome this issue with the temperature dependence. Uh, a similar problem we have, for example, in wrist watches where the frequency is generated by quartz crystals and also certain cuts of the quartz crystals can lead to temperature independent um, frequency generation so that the time passes similarly on a warm summer day and on a cold winter day, even though it might feel differently. So uh, if we now have a look onto um, such a microelectronic system, we can see that our surface acoustic wave filters are on top of such microelectronic systems and that the functional wafers consist of the single crystalline lithium tantalate and lithium niobate. And um, the electrodes are, you can see here, and very often there is a protective cup wafer to um, ensure that the very small metallic structures um, yeah, are not impacted by any kind of, of yeah, um, problems. <clears throat> 
So what we can see here is that many different materials are used in microelectronic systems. We have polymers, we have ceramics, we have metallic solder balls, we have the single crystal materials, and all of them have different thermomechanical problems, uh, properties. And this can come to problems if you think that all the systems are cooled down after manufacturing and they're exposed to thermocycling during, during qualification and service. So high stresses can occur. And as we see here on a real surface acoustic wave device, cracks can occur and the functionality of the device can be lost. And maybe the functionality of the whole microelectronic system can, can come to problems. So what we did, do, did on the first step was to get a feeling for the stresses that can occur on our surface acoustic wave filters. And so we did some simulation. Therefore, we had to take the material properties and especially those of the single crystalline materials are strongly dependent on the micro um, scale. So on the unit cells, we see here the unit cell for lithium tantalate, that looks the same for lithium myopate. And um, if we have a look onto Young's modulus and coefficient of thermal expansion, we can see that the strongest atomic bonds are aligned along this um, C-axis. So we have the highest Young's modulus in this direction together with the smallest coefficient of thermal expansion in this direction. If we now put um, these properties into um, finite elements simulations together with all the other properties, we were able to see that on our surface acoustic wave filters, the highest stresses are on the surface of these devices in the vicinity of solar balls but also significant stresses at the edges, not so high, but at the beginning, we wanted to focus on the stresses on the surface of our devices. Um, okay, now we had a first impression of the stresses that can occur, and we wanted to look on the strength of the material so we can see if at which point fracture can occur. So we were looking for a testing device with rather similar stress distributions, so biaxial stress fields, small effective volumes activated, and for the beginning, no influence of edges. And there we found this ball on free ball test where we wanted to fit our first mechanical characterizations. Thereby the specimen is supported by free balls on the one side and loaded through a fourth ball on the center of the opposite side, leading to a well-defined biaxial stress field in the center of the specimen at the surface of our sample, so comparable to what we see in a real surface acoustic wave device. So we cut out specimens with these dimensions and did the mechanical tests. And here are the first results. We see here a viable plot where the probability of failure is plotted versus the failure stress. Uh, two important values are the characteristic strength, so the stress at which we have a probability of failure of 63%. And the second important parameter is the viable modulus. So basically the slope of this fitted curve. And this shows the scatter of data. So a high M means that we have a low scatter of data. And the low M, as we observed here, means that we have a high scattering in data in strength values. If we do the uh, analyzation of our characteristic strength, we could see that surprisingly, or at least for me surprisingly, the strength of lithium tantalate was higher by a factor of something like 2.5 compared to lithium niobate. Even though tantalum as well as niobium are in the same group of the periodic table, and same, uh, both have the same crystal structure. So this is, at least to me, it was really surprising. Um, there can be two reasons for these differences. So either we have a different defect size in our materials or a different toughness. And I will show you today that both of these um, things influenced or were the reason for the big difference between the two materials. At first, we had a look onto the fractured specimens and we could see that every specimen from lithium tantalate fractured somehow like this and every specimen from lithium niobate somehow like this. So we were pretty sure that cleavage planes seem to dominate the fracture behavior in those materials. Um, so we went to some colleagues that are able to do atomistic modeling 
and they had to look onto certain planes of family, uh, family planes, and had to look onto the bonding forces between the atoms and calculated work of separation and out of this, the toughness of certain or of different planes. What we can see here is that we have a higher toughness for each of the planes for lithium tantalate compared to lithium niobate. And secondly, that the most critical cleavage plane is this O12 family of planes um, along which we would expect the fracture to occur. If we would have a not rotated single crystals, the planes, the cleavage planes, would be aligned somehow like this in our samples, so with an angle of 57 degrees to the surface. We can see here the nice 120 degree symmetry as expected for these unit cells I showed you before. And so we, the fracture patterns should look somewhat like this, but this was not what we observed. And the reason is simply that to enhance the functional properties, the wafers were rotated for the surface acoustic wave device. So clockwise for the tantalate, this orientation is called LT42. And for lithium niobate clockwise, and this configuration is called LN128. So if we now have a look on how the cleavage planes are aligned in our single crystals, we can see that two of those cleavage planes are almost perpendicular to the surface, and one of the planes is almost parallel to the surface. And we, if we again look on our to the surface. And the two other planes have an angle of 47 degrees to the surface. If we again compare this with our testing configuration, um, we would expect fracture, especially along this plane, where we again have the highest tensile forces perpendicular to this plane. OK, so then we had again a look at our fracture patterns. And we could see that for every single specimen, we could see fracture along this most critical cleavage planes for lithium tantalate, as well as for lithium niobate. OK, so this can now be of importance if we think of the roughening and polishing process in our wafers. And at first, I would like to explain you one um, thing that is done to increase the functional property of the devices. So at the electrodes, not only surface acoustic waves are emitted, but also bulk acoustic waves. And uh, they can be reflected at mirror polished surfaces and can be detected at the output in the digital transducer and disturb the signal. This is not what we want. So what manufacturers do is to thin and roughen the substrate in order to scatter away these unwanted bulk acoustic uh, waves. And everyone who is familiar with brittle materials will know that introducing uh, such defects into the surface will probably very likely decrease the strength of the material. Um, then we had a closer look onto how this roughening process uh, look like. So um, due to the rotation of the grinding wheel, we get grinding grooves coming from the sander um, going to the edges of the wafers. So we have all kinds of different orientations for the screening groups on the surface of our single crystals. And if we now think of the small dimensions of our uh, devices, um, the screening groups can be parallel, can be considered parallel on the surface of the single crystals. And now we wanted to know if there is an influence, if the scratches are parallel or within a certain angle to the cleavage plane, planes and how this can affect the strength of our material. So we moved on and selected specimens with all kinds of different uh, grinding groove orientations on the surface. And what we could see was that uh, we get the lowest strength values for grinding groups parallel to the cleavage planes, better values for 
uh, grinding grooves with an angle to the cleavage planes. And all of them are what we expected much lower compared to the mirror polished ones. If we have a closer look on the values, we can see that um, the values can be different by 50%. So if we can tailor the grinding orientation, we can decrease the impact of those grinding groups on our materials. Um, if we do fractography on real surface acoustic relief devices, we could see that the screening groups are often the fracture origin. So the fracture starts at this um, flaw on the surface, follows a low energy cleavage plane, and then turn, depending on the stress state in the device, in the different directions. Um, however, the grinding process is very complicated. There are a lot of different variables to be considered. So to get a deeper feeling of what's going on in the material, we try to do some experiments in laboratory conditions. So we made scratch testers with uh, Berkowitz intender with a certain load in a certain direction and wanted to know how our materials look like if we make scratches parallel or with an angle to the cleavage planes on our specimens. And um, when we look how the subsurface damage looked like, we could see that the worst, worst case scenario is scratches parallel to grinding uh, to cleavage planes, but a relatively soft lithium niobate. So we get a, a very huge network of cracks underneath the surface. And for the hard lithium tantalate in certain directions, there's even no um, subsurface damage visible, only small cracks on the surface. Um, we again made the scratches in the center of our specimen, so we were able to test them afterwards in our ball and full ball configuration and could see that the worst case scenario is lithium niobate with scratches parallel to the cleavage plane. And for other configurations, we get much higher strength values. And especially for lithium tantalate, we can see much higher strength values. Um, the difference in strength we will see on the next slide um, doing fractography. And then we will have a look onto how this large scatter can happen in the materials. So we can see for scratches parallel to the cleavage plane that um, at this origin of uh, of fracture, the cracks go through the material without any disturption of the, of the cracks. And if we do the scratches in a certain angle to the cleavage plane, again, the origin of fracture is the scratch, but then the crack has to turn into a plane with lower fracture energy. And also, as we saw before, the um, impact of the scratch is not so severe for such a direction. And this can explain the difference in strength for the materials. Um, and the origin or the reason for the large scatter in data, even though we had very controlled testing conditions and always the same load we can see here in this 3D tomography, um, where you can see on top the induced scratch with our nano indenter and the 3D um, network of the subsurface damage. And if we exactly stop at this point, we can see that we can have relatively shallow subsurface damage in this region, deep subsurface damage in this region. And this can explain the large scattering data. So even for, um, for the same load and the same scratching direction, we get much uh, a lot of differences in severity of the induced damage. And this can explain the large scatter in, in strength data we will probably not overcome for even for mirror polished specimens. So to summarize this uh, small res uh, this results, we have low strength for any defects parallel to cleavage planes, high strength values for any other configurations. And the reason why lithium tantalate is much stronger compared to lithium niobate has to do with the toughness and the higher hardness of the lithium tantalate material. So this was for the experiments on the surface, but as I showed you before, we also have to worry about the high stresses at the edges of the material. So we also did some experiments with uh, three-point pending 
to also see what kind of effects do the edges of the material have and if we have to worry about the cutting process. And again, we did, uh, we selected two different orientations. So one orientation with a cleavage plane perpendicular to the highest tensile stresses and a different orientation where we expected um, higher uh, strength values. And if we compare the results, we can see indeed that we get the higher stresses, or let's say the lower stresses for those specimens where the cleavage planes are perpendicular to the highest stress values. The same we did for lithium niobate. And again, we can see that this unfavorable configuration or orientation lead to lower strength values and thus, uh, thus uh, uh, lower reliability of the material. All of the fractures initiated at the edges of the material, and this can explain the lower strength values compared to the biaxial test I showed you before. Okay, so um, these are the experiments for rather large um, single crystals. But now we see a trend, new designs towards smaller features. So for example, temperature um, compensated surface acoustic wave filters, uh, their the single crystals are combined with glass to compensate for the um, temperature dependencies. And also multi-layer multi -layer surface acoustic waves are um, under research. And there we can see small uh, scale um, of the individual layers. And so this is something we wanted to look into detail. And also this kind of configuration now enable uh, different orientations of the waves. This is what I would like to start in the beginning. So up to now, we have only seen um, strength values for this configuration. We know that especially this wave orientation has a relatively soft surface. So one idea was to turn the the highest um, Young's modulus in plane. And uh, we tried so to in increase the hardness and uh, decrease the surface damage of our materials. And um, indeed, our uh, hardness measurements, our Berkowitz hardness measurements showed that we get a higher hardness for this LN0 configuration compared to LN128. So a higher hardness, around 20% higher. We again did our biaxial bending tests and could see that the characteristic strength doubles for this configuration. So this is really good news. And um, we could also see differences in the different uh, fracture behavior. So for the LN0 configurations, we do not have a um, cleavage plane perpendicular to the surface. So all of them have a higher angle and may be activated at higher stresses and also due to the higher surface, the flaws and uh, surface defects cannot be introduced so easily during uh, grinding and polishing processes. And um, yeah, due to downsizing and multi-layer and thin film structures, we are now also interested into plastic deformation of the brittle materials. And if we have a look onto very low loads and displacements of our work rich indents, we could see pop-in phenomena. So this is the very first point where we have irreversible deformation on our specimens. And then we wanted to have a look if there is some kind of plastic deformation going on in our specimens. Uh, since Berkowitz indents, uh, uh, indent has edges and will therefore promote fracture and plastic deformation in certain directions, we moved on to spherical indents and started with large imprints to get a first feeling for what's going on in our single crystals. And there we could see that, again, we activate the same cleavage planes for our large imprints. Uh, nevertheless, we wanted to see what's going on exactly at this very first point of plastic deformation. So we interrupted our experiments at this displacement and wanted to see how our surface looks like after spherical indents for very low loads and after the very first uh, incipient plasticity in lithium tantalate and lithium niobate. And what we can see here is that we do not only have our cracks as seen before, but also plastic deformation in the same directions in the same set of planes for lithium tantalate, as well as for lithium niobate. Here again, we have these traces of plastic deformation together with cracks in the same directions. And we could see that especially 
this kind of pyramidal system seem to be the origin of twinning in these materials if we have stress states and small scale uh, experiments like we see here. Interestingly, um, the first plastic deformation is that more or less the, the same shear stresses for both materials. And um, we are now looking into our new configuration, our LN zeros. I do not have reliable data yet, but what we can see is that also here we see nice twins on the surface, 90 degree twins. So this is something where we would like to go into detail in future. Okay, so um, now we know that plastic deformation can be an issue in this kind of materials. And so we moved on into small scale experiments and started doing some toughness measurements in the region where this multi-layer surface acoustic wave made hand and manufactured cantilevers with notches parallel to cleavage planes and did some in situ testing in the SEM. So we loaded our cantilevers, you see the notch with an intender wedge. We see a nice linear load displacement curve. And then we will come to the point of fracture. We see no traces of plastic deformation. And so even for our small scale experiments, we see only brittle fracture. So these values can also taken for, for larger samples and are comparable, at least the trend is comparable to what we observed first in our agonistic modeling experiments. And again, we can see that the toughness for lithium tantalate is higher compared to lithium myobate. But since we are interested into the plastic deformation behavior, we also went to the TEM, manufactured much smaller cantilevers, aligned the twinning planes under an angle where they see the highest shear stresses and did again our tests and again, we only see brittle fracture here, again, following the cleavage planes. So at this point, we were not successful. But at the same time, colleagues from Lyon did similar experiments on silicon. And what they could see was that um, for very, very small thicknesses, dislocations um, can nucleate and move in front of the crack tip, lead to an increased fracture toughness up to a factor of four. And this is also what we would like to see for our lithium tantalate. We, we know that we have to go towards smaller thicknesses to also see similar effects, but we would expect no dislocations, but twinning uh, along these planes here. So yeah, thinking of the ever smaller um, dimensions, this is probably the way we have to go in future. So at this point, I would like to come to the summary. I could show you today that the strength of lithium tantalate is higher than the strength of single crystalline lithium myopate. This is due to the higher toughness of lithium tantalate and um, also due to the higher hardness of lithium tantalate, which lead to less severe surface defects in lithium tantalate compared to lithium myopate. We could observe a similar pop in behavior leading to plastic deformation in similar uh, directions for both materials. We could see a similar sensitivity due to edge defects. So this is important for the cutting processes of the wafers. And uh, what I would like to highlight is that for both materials, we have to be aware that we have to strongly look on the orientation and on to our testing equipment and orientation and activate the defect population. So as we can see here, we can measure much higher hardness uh, strength for lithium tantalate compared to lithium myobate for this biaxial configuration. But if you only do, for example, three point bending, it can happen that if you take an unfortunate orientation, you can even measure higher strength values for lithium niobate too, compared to lithium tantalate. And also the orientation of the wafers can play a huge role. So by only changing the orientation of the wafer, uh, doubled characteristic strength can be achieved for this kind of materials. So now I'm at the end of my talk and I, I hope that there are some questions. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for this nice uh, introduction into the mechanical properties of lithium niobate and lithium tantalate. I see Xu Fei's hand going up. Please ask your question. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Kuba. Very nice, comprehensive talk. Um, Actually, I have a comment and a short question uh, regarding the comment. And could you please go back to slide 31? Thanks. Uh, 
Sure. So where you showed the indentation pop in with a different size, first you, uh, you use the brokerage indenter and then you use the large ball because of the size is larger and easy to detect in SEM, which I understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, regarding the non indentation popping test here, we also perform some uh, test on other oxides. We realize there is a so-called size effect Fact, meaning that the much smaller tip actually gives you complete uh, plasticity without the cracking. But mm -hmm. once you go above a certain size of the tip, uh, we started seeing uh, both cracks and um, uh, dislocations in this case. Um, so um, we also tested on alumina, for instance, and also uh, we, we validated the size effect very nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're interested, we can discuss it in a, another case. But my question is, um, so regarding uh, the grinding process, uh, we know the biggest problem is always the brittleness of the materials at room temperature. Uh, is it possible to perform some high temperature grinding? Because that actually might help to induce the surface dislocations because we know the yield strength is much, much smaller at higher temperature. Would that be uh, useful or possible? What would be your opinion? Thanks. I, I never thought of that. Um... I'm not sure if, if manufacturers want to have this kind of, of plastic deformation in the surface. I'm not sure if they might disturb the, the wave propagation, but I'm not sure about that. But it looks like a good idea. Do you know at which temperatures you would expect uh, plastic deformations at the grinding process? Um, actually, I, I checked the lithium niobate and, uh, well, mm -hmm. it needs to go up to 1100 degrees C to completely induce the plastic deformation without cracking. But mm -hmm. with the small particles, maybe the temperature could be lower because we can induce much higher local shear stress, as you showed here, actually, for the nanny indentation. But, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a adequate guess for now. <laughs> thanks. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much for this nice discussion. I see some more hands going up, but I suggest in terms of time, we continue and maybe um, you can you can ask your question afterwards. So thank you very much again, Ma uh, Ma Manuel Gruber for this nice talk. And we come-